so I'm Diogo, I'm from, um, I'm now working at LifeBit uh, on UK, but all of this work was developed while I was in Portugal at the IMM Institute. Um, so, what was the big motivation behind this project? Well, it all, sta it all started when I started working on Nextflow, uh, which I immediately fell in love with. With all of these great characteristics that the, the, the software had, uh, like the, port uh, the portability, the, res the, the fact that it could be reproducible, the scalability and the ease that things could be parallelized, the multi-scale uh, containerization, and the native cloud support. However, there, was, there were some challenges that we met along the way, um, and that they still persist even though we had all these great benefits. So um, these challenges are, most of you may be quite familiar with that because um, the bioinformatics landscape is very fa a very fast space, vast, fast paced uh, landscape. New software is always emerging. Existing software is always changing. So our pipelines need to be continually adapted and evolve. And you, we need to be agile in a way that we developed these pipelines. And we also wanted to remove the pain of, you have this whole pipeline defined, but now you want to change this, just a particular part inside of your pipeline. And if it's a very large workflow, then you know that it will be a pain. And we wanted to do something that is only possible because of Nextflow and the combination of Nextflow and containers, uh, which was the Nextflow, uh, the Flowcraft project, sorry. So the, pro the premise here was that we wanted to change the paradigm from building or developing workflows to developing components. So what this means is that instead of um, worrying about develop, develop, developing the entire pipeline, we just focus on developing, developing the components that will make the atomic units of that pipeline. And then we will have an engine that will orchestrate how these components will be linked and that will be made automatically for us. And so we only focus on building the actual components of the pipeline. And so what are components? Basically components in this regard are modular pieces of Nextflow code. This is all very familiar for people that already work with Nextflow. So each of these components must be containerized and this container must contain, uh, of course, the software to run all of, the, all of its tasks. And it also needs to contain um, some basic rules. For example, what, what is the input and the output of this, the, this component? What are the parameters, if there are any? Uh, and then some resources, for example, what are the CPUs by default, the memory, the containers that it, that will, that it will use, uh, and so on. Um, and so just to give you an idea of what these components actually are, this is not really magic. This, basically a component is composed of two files, an Nextflow template, which is basically an Nextflow code, as you are very accustomed to. The only, the only difference is that we add some placeholder um, variables here because we will use Jinja template uh, to generate these components. Um, and for, so the most importantly are the input and output channel which, the, which will um, specify how this component will be linked with the other components that you may want to build in your pipeline. And then you have these PIDs um, which basically uh, prevent conflicts of channels and processes that may be duplicated in your pipeline. So this is pretty basic. You can put any Nextflow code in here. Uh, you can put one or more processes. It's just okay. And then you have uh, a Python declarative class, which is basically a declarative stuff. It's no, no programming is required, where you basically say what is the input and output type of this component, where only the input is necessary. You may have no output at all. You can specify a parameters that you have and provide default values in the description. And you can also provide directives um, sorry, I should be doing this. And you can also provide directives for this process, which will include, most importantly of all, the container where this component will run. But there are much more, uh, uh, much more attributes that you can use that will make the process of building these pipelines much easier. And so just to demonstrate how this could make uh, building a workflow using um, Nextflow very easy, is that if you want to build, for example, this pipeline, this linear pipeline, where you just want to make some trimming, then you fast QC, then you want to do an assembly, then you want to polish an assembly. <coughs> All of this is very easily done with one line of code where you do flow craft build, you specify the components that you want, and you specify the output file where you want to build your pipeline. And this will generate a next flow pipeline with all the configurations to a specified directory that will be uh, ready to run and it will use all of the advantages of uh, next flow pipelines. And the other cool thing is that 
since this is a regular next flow pipeline that you just generated, if you try, for example, the help, you can see that this will provide um, a help uh, that will be tailor-made to the components that you put in your pipeline. So in this case, since we have these components, only the parameters that are specific for those components will appear here with the default value and the description. So all of this is very modular and very easily um, to assemble. So having this system, it's very easy to go experimental. So if we want to change um, the assembler software, instead of using spades, we want to use Skiza. It's just a matter of changing the word because we already have a component for, for Skiza. Now, if you want to add something at the end of the pipeline, for example, you want to add some annotation for the genomes that you just, um, that you just um, assembled, it's, easy. it's as easy as adding these two components with the fork notation. Um, and this will basically create this DAG of the pipeline. And the real advantage of this is that now if you want to add something inside of the, the pipeline, you don't need to go inside of the real large Nextflow file just to change that. You just insert a new component. If you want to change some, uh, one existing component, you just go to the code of that specific component and you'll have everything there. So you don't have to deal with the entire uh, pipeline file. And it's very easy to get wild. So um, this is a very silly example, but it just goes to demonstrate that it's very, uh, it's very easy to build um, very large pipelines and it's very easy to, for example, benchmark software where you can fork uh, a piece of software into multiple ones that are, are, are the same, but you provide different parameters for them, and you try to um, compare how the results go um, with, this, with this comparison. Um, besides this, um, we have, to, uh, to, um, to make it more easy to build pipelines, we have some uh, features in our engine. So for the forks you have already seen, so you can fork one component into two or more, there is no limitation about this. You can set up secondary channels because sometimes you have deep components that are very far apart, but one of them may share information with another. So in Flowcraft, we have some attributes which make this very easy. You don't have to deal with the channel definition at all. You just have to say that this component will emit to a channel and this component will receive from them, from that channel. And if you have these two components in the pipeline, Flowcraft will automatically link them. So you also have extra inputs because sometimes you have a pipeline that, for example, takes FastQ, in, FastQ as input, um, does some processing, and then assembles the, the, the FastQ into FASTA, and then does some annotations, for instance. But you have FastQs and you have uh, uh, FASTAs of uh, samples that have already been assembled. So you can specify that this component at the end will receive an extra input, and what this does is basically it will merge the output of the previous process with the input that the user can provide via a new parameter. So you can inject uh, data directly from the user into any component which will be merged from the data that will be provided before. And now uh, one of the latest features is that you now have recipes which makes uh, the building of specific workflows uh, much easier for developers and for users because for developers you can create uh, the pipeline string and attach to it different sets of parameters and directives. Um, and for the user, he basically just needs to know what is the name of the recipe with this pipeline configuration, and Flowcraft will build all of the next full pipeline for you. So besides the building, we also added some new features. For example, um, we have the live monitoring of workflows. Um, which allows you to track the progress of, uh, of a Nextflow pipeline. So since Flowcraft generates vanilla uh, uh, Nextflow pipelines, you just need to go to the, direct, to the uh, directory where you are running your pipeline, and you type Flowcraft inspect, and you can add the option to broadcast. It will return a, a link, but um, the video is not loading very fast. But the idea is that if you click on that link, you'll go to a, a, a web application, where you'll see the progress of the pipeline in real time. So every time there is a change in your pipeline, you'll know how many processes are running, how many of them are failing. If they are failing, you can see the log to see what's wrong. And at the bottom of the, the, the web page, we'll have um, a table of um, uh, a table with all of the processes in your pipeline. And in the final part, you'll have a DAG where you can see the progress of your workflow towards the DAG. I will not have much time to show all of this. 
maybe try to go here at the bottom. Yeah, so this is the image of the DAG that you have where you can see visually how your pipeline was built and how many processes are running for each one of them. And the other part of um, Flowcraft is that each component can write reports to a specific JSON file. And these JSON files can be compiled at the end to generate uh, an interactive report with the results of your pipeline. So here, basically, you can run any, you can, cons you can build any pipeline with Flowcraft. And then at the end, if you do Flowcraft report, you'll get a link to this page and you'll have the results of the pipelines, but only for the modules that you included in your pipeline. So this, basically this report, this report is dynamically built depending on the pipeline that you build as well. So for the future, uh, Flowcraft is basically just a, a way of building Nextflow pipelines, but it does not provide you the computational resources to, to build this. So what I'm excited about, about in the future is that we are collaborating with LifeBit and I'm currently working there. And the cool thing is that now we can have a way of building these pipelines and on the fly um, deploy them to run on AWS on any other cloud. For instance, we support now AWS and Azure and we'll soon support Google Cloud. So we can basically create our own pipeline and automatically deploy it on the, on the cloud at any scale. So the team, so the project was led by me, but the, there were contributions from a lot of the, the lab mates at our group, uh, mainly Tiago, Katrina, and Bruno, and also our advisors um, that uh, helped us along the way. Um, so that's it. Flowcraft is available um, with an open license at GitHub. We have a, a, a package on PyPy and Conda, um, and you are welcome to, to join the community and to um, contribute yourself with something that you like. Thank you.